Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Mike Vandersteen. And as you know, every month we try to bring a different focus, a different department to share a little bit about their roles and responsibilities. And we have 20 departments, so it can take a while to get through the, the ringer. And today we're very pleased to have one of our department heads with us, Jim Groff, Child Support Director. Jim, welcome. Thank you, and thank you, Chairman Vandersteen. I appreciate being here to tell you about my department. Well, it's good to have you here. Why don't we start by having you share a little bit about yourself, your background, when you started in the child support department. Okay, I, I started in, in child support about uh, 22, 23 years ago, and I'm going on my 22nd uh, year, um, or I will be completing my second 20, my 22nd year, and uh, I had two years before that in health and human services as the accounting manager, and then I moved over to child support, and I've been there ever since and uh, saw the department grow a little bit and then shrink just recently because of uh, budget restraints and so forth. So, um, but we're doing, um, as everybody is in the county, more with less. Yeah, everybody's doing more with less. And 22 years in the department, you've obviously seen a lot of changes over your tenure. What is the mission of the child support department? What, is, what does the department do? The mission is to, uh, to serve the, the residents of Sheboygan County who need uh, child support services, which include um, establishing paternity for non-married couples, um, establishing uh, court orders for the provision of health insurance and the collection of child support uh, in, in our child support cases, to establish orders for child's pla children placed in uh, foster care, or kinship care, uh, and to monitor those court orders for payment amounts and periodically review and, if necessary, adjust um, our court orders. So give us an example of what would be a, uh, a typical situation, if there is one, but what would be an example of a situation where someone would come in and want your assistance and what process would you go through? Well, the first thing we, we need to know is um, if they are... Um, in the process of getting married or, or not, and um, if they're, they've just been living together, what we need to do is ask them to fill out an application for services. Once that application for services is filled out, um, we, um, we open up a case for them and, and start working it. Prior to it being actually open, we, we do some background checking. Uh, we get income uh, levels for the father as well as for the mother, and then uh, we put that all together and wait for the documents to come back to us. And once they do, then we, uh, as I said, open up a case and we uh, start following it up and bringing them in and having them discuss with our specialists the need uh, that they're looking for and the services that they're looking for. Now, you said in the process of getting married, you meant the process of getting divorced. I so if they're divorced, but um, if they're getting married, uh, we have a lot of couples coming in that are just living together and are raising a family. So uh, sometimes they come in because they um, they want to split up and leave. So then we have to do something with them also. So whether they're getting divorced, married, single, uh, there's many different mm -hmm. situations where someone may need to come into child support and, and seek assistance. And, right. you, and you cover those areas and it's predominantly getting financial support to care for your child or children and make sure that the responsible spouse or responsible father or mother is helping provide that assistance if they're not in that household. Correct, and, and one thing that just has changed uh, in the last five years has been uh, that uh, we have to uh, make sure that they, someone carries health insurance for the children, if not both parents. So what type of staffing do we need in Sheboygan County in order to provide these services? A lot more than we have right now, <laughs> but we have about 5,000 cases, or just over almost 5,500 cases, and um, we, um, we have six people that uh, handle the, um, the non-support cases, which are, are the majority of our cases, and then we have one and a half person that uh, does the um, paternity cases. So the paternity cases are where the child is not yet born, and we're going to establish paternity once the child is born. But the other cases, the non-4D cases that we have, um, those are um, um, our busiest cases are, that we have to do a lot of work on. Most of the time, it starts out with locating one of the parents a lot of times, and then it's uh, finding out their employer, finding out their income, setting up um, 
court hearings to determine uh, how much they will pay or will not pay, because uh, in some cases uh, they both agree not to not to get child support or collect child support, and because of that, uh, we just have to monitor it to make sure they're carrying out what the order of the court has been. So your uh, total staff in the department? Our, our total staff right now is 12. 12. And, and 12 uh, staff are responsible for a little over 5,000 cases. That's total, but some do not work on cases at right. all. But, right. um, but they all have a, a helping hand in it. Right. The, um, right now, just using our specialists, the, the one and a half paternity um, people that I have, uh, they handle about 500 cases. So um, that's split fairly equally between the two of them. And then, uh, then the other specialists, the six other specialists that I have, their caseload is about 8, 000, um, 800 cases. So. Oh, and, and the average statewide, if memory serves, is in that five to 700 range, is it not? That's what we used to be. Uh, and uh, now, um, of course, we had to re redistribute and do some other things. So um, now we're a little bit above the average. But if you look at larger counties, for instance, um, I don't understand how like Milwaukee County or Dane County can, can have uh, a specialist split 1,100, 1,200 cases that they're responsible for. So. Wow. Because wow. it's a, a busy day, but a, the day goes fast, and uh, uh, it's usually never the same. So we always have something new and different going on. And I'm sure you've received calls that um, they're looking for help, and they can't get a hold of us. Right. And uh, we do what we can and uh, when we can. And uh, we do answer every call that we get. So so what is your annual budget? You support 12 staff. Uh, What's the total budget? It's uh, about a, almost a million one. I would say uh, right offhand, and um, and that uh, pays for the entire thing with a very little tax levy that we use right now. Right, right, because you receive a lot of funding from the state and federal government. Correct. We we get sixty six percent funding from um, from the um, the state and federal government through the through the state. And, uh, it's a federal funding that we get. Uh, their federal reimbursement, and then we get uh, or we earn uh, approximately twenty five to thirty percent additional funding from, from state programs that, that are given to child support for their por performance. If they, they meet the performance requirements that are set by the state um, and the federal government, uh, then we do earn extra funds. So. And last question before I turn it over to Mike. What's your sense of the roles and responsibilities and, and the demands for your services? Does Every individual that is a single parent or you know, going through a divorce or, or going to be remarried, do 100% of these individuals come to you for child support services? Is it 90%? Is it 50%? Because, because clearly the more single mothers and fathers there are out there raising children, the more your uh, department is required to, to help them, to assist them and make sure the children receive sufficient funding to be raised properly and, and take care of health care. We, um, in Sheboygan County, we probably process about 65%, I would say. And that's based on the fact that the, the, uh, any individual that receives um, any type of benefits through the county, uh, they must, if, they're, um, if they have young children and, and so forth, apply for our services. Uh, that's one re requirement. But there are many other single parents out there that uh, have, have good jobs or um, have agreements with their, uh, their, uh, the father of their children, and uh, they agree to go it alone. And then maybe after five or six years, uh, all is not bliss anymore, and they come to us and they say, well, at this point in time, I want to uh, have your services. And then uh, uh, in a case like that, if they do not have any benefit um, coming into them from, uh, from the county, uh, then uh, at that time we charged them, I believe it just went up to $35 for, um, for our services. And uh, once they pay that, then uh, the only other charges that we charge uh, them for is uh, uh, an annual uh, receding and disbursement fee, it's called. And that's something that goes directly to the state. We don't see any of that anymore. Very good. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. Jim, let's talk about some specific examples of the work that you do in your department so our viewers can better understand uh, those activities. For instance, uh, when there's a divorce, what level of involvement do you have? Well, once, once uh, people decide to divorce, they need to uh, 
to come to our agency if there are children and only if there are children because uh, there's a lot of divorces where it's just the, the two, um, the, the, um, the husband and the wife. And those are, are handled, but those are handled as, um, we call them non-support cases because there's nothing as far as child support in, involved in that. But we just keep records of them all in, in the kids system, which is the state system that, um, that is operated here in Wisconsin. And uh, so we, we get them the forms that they need um, and uh, tell them what, what's going to happen. Uh, we uh, set court dates for them if they, if they need them, unless they decide to uh, run the, um, run the uh, court orders and, and so forth themselves, which they, are, they can do. They can take anything they want into the courts pro se. They do not have to use our department. But when there are children involved, and they're receiving benefits, and they have to go through our department. And we set up interviews with them, and we, we uh, test to make sure that we do the paternity test to make sure that uh, he is the father of the ch child or children, and, um, and we, it's the whole thing that has to be done in order for us to go to court and, um, and uh, have the judge um, decide what, what needs to be paid and so forth. It used to be that we were on, um, it was called a percentage standard, and now that's no longer necessary. We base a lot of orders on the percentage standard, but we don't use that per se because the judge can rule whatever he wants to. Okay. So. And then when there are children present uh, in <clears throat> divorced families, what uh, services does child support offer in the areas of uh, visitation and custody? Visitation and custody are, are one of the many services that are offered, but uh, the child support agency does not handle that. Visit, visitation and, and custody is handled strictly through the court system. Uh, normally what happens is if somebody needs visitation rights or, or custody, they, um, and they come to our agency, we send them over to the clerk of court's office saying they need to get either a pro se package or ask for a court order package for establishing uh, custody and visitation. And then that is processed and, and handled through the uh, family court commissioner. And th then the family court commissioner has, um, she has programs set up that uh, she deals with, um, with custody and visitation and, and what kind of visitation it should be, if it's going to be, um, uh, that there's going to be, have to be a representative there with them at all time, or, or if it's, uh, they can have them for a weekend or, or whatever it's, it's going to be. And then everybody, if the, everybody agrees to, um, what, what is decided, then uh, that's the way it's going to be set up and the court order will be established at that. Okay, now if a woman would, uh, would come to your department who's pregnant and she doesn't know who the father is, how can your uh, department assist that person? Well, we start off with an interview and, um, and set up as to uh, if she happens to know the name of the person or if she happens to know where this person lives or works because um, there's a lot of times we get somebody coming in to say that um, they are um, they were out of town and they ran into um, somebody and, and hooked up with them and uh, they uh, decided um, they were in love and um, all of a sudden she became pregnant. Uh, with that, um, there are uh, many examples that, that we could, could give you. I've often said I wanted to write a book about the different um, things we've heard in the interviews and so forth, but um, we wouldn't do that. Uh, but um, once that's all set up and we uh, find out as much as we can, we look for them. And then uh, if, they're, if they happen to have things like a social security number or uh, where they work and telephone numbers and so forth, we do do the contacts of all these uh, individuals and find out from them. We have them come in and uh, just ask them if, if they um, are willing to, uh, to sign papers that said they are, going, are the father. Um, or if uh, they're planning on signing uh, what we call a voluntary patern paternity admission form. And if they are going to do that, they have to wait until after the child is born. And <clears throat> if the child has not been born, once we're done with all these questions and getting as much information as we can, then we have to wait also for the child to be born. Um, and then once the child is born, then we set up paternity tests that we conduct right in my office. And uh, once we get uh, uh, the buccal swab, which is a, a, a swabbing of the inside of the cheek, um, we, we send that in to our, 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 our um, paternity um, analyst, and they process it. It usually takes 
oh, about 10 days to get that back to us. And once it's back, then we call the, the people back in and let them know that they are at least 99.9% .9%, uh, definitely the father. And um, then we go from there. And then we set up and go into the process of uh, establishing uh, what, they're, what they want, what they're looking at doing, if they're planning on living together, if they um, will be living separately and will need other things. And uh, we do as much as we can for them. So. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, in most situations where child support's being paid, I think we expect that uh, they're, they're living with the mother and the father is paying that child support. Earlier you mentioned something about the Wisconsin uh, Support Collection Trust Fund. Could you explain a little bit about how that works? Um, sure. About 15 years ago, I want to say it was probably, when I, prior to that, all the monies and so forth that we collected for child support were handled through the county. And at that particular time, um, we collected the, the funds, uh, dispersed it from, right, uh, from the county, even cut checks there. And it, uh, the first people to do that were the clerk of court staff. And then at one point in time, the, those people in the clerk was, court, court, excuse me, the clerk of court staff, that um, when they were transferred to the child support agency. And um, they became child support people. And, uh, they processed all their paperwork. And then when the kids system came on board, which was about 10 years ago, I think it was, uh, at that particular time, the state decided that they wanted to do uh, a statewide agency to handle the distribution and collection of funds. So that's when the Wisconsin Collection and Trust Fund became, um, was created. And at first it started off, um, in Madison and then it was changed to um, Milwaukee and it still is in Milwaukee right now and uh, all the collections that, that are taken in are either sent directly from the employer to the trust fund or in a very limited number of cases we do still collect uh, funds at, at the county we process that on a daily basis and send that all to the um, to the trust fund also and then they have um, they have a five-day turnaround period in which they have to, excuse me, no, wrong, they have a, a 24 hour turnaround period that they have to distribute the money and uh, send that to the, um, to the uh, custodial parent, either in the form of a, a check or in a, in the, uh, a debit card uh, contribution or um, direct deposit into their personal checking account. Okay, now if someone uh, doesn't uh, get their direct deposit or their debit uh, card, um, what, uh, how can you assist the person with those kind of problems? And that happens. We, um, we do have um, occasion to, uh, to find out that somebody didn't get their debit card or the money wasn't placed in there at the proper time. And then we uh, ask them to call the, um, the trust fund, um, or not the, excuse me, the, uh, the debit card holder, which at this particular time is J.P. Morgan slash Chase. And uh, they usually handle any problems that, that they have with uh, debit cards. Uh, if, if it's something that um, they, they're getting a check or a direct deposit, uh, those are the trust fund handles. And, and we'll usually call the trust fund and say, such and such a check came in. Uh, it was this company that sent you the check. Uh, it supposedly came, you supposedly received it according <coughs> to our records that we can see on the screen on such and such a date, and it was sent out on on two days later, uh, can you tell us if that was cashed? And then they process, us, process it and let us know. If it was not cashed, um, they can issue a new check, but they usually wait 30 days for it to be done unless there's some extraordinary circumstances that um, uh, there's a very uh, big need that they need the monies right away. And then what they'll do is they'll stop payment and then issue a, um, a new check. Okay. Now the circuit court uh, puts people under certain orders. Um, if they don't comply, how do you enforce those orders? We usually, um, we usually contact the, um, the NCP, or if it's a CP not, um, not um, following the order of the court, we will contact them and find out what their problem is and uh, if they're willing to, um, to follow the order of the court. And if they decide not to, what we need to do is um, uh, set, it, um, set up a, um, get a motion package ourselves and we will take it into court again for uh, contempt. Because if they don't follow the orders of the court, then it's contempt. Um, 
charge against them. And so we set it up and we have block times in each of the courts um, that uh, we can use and we follow it and uh, set up in our next available court time in one of the, uh, in next available block time in one of the courts, uh, them to come in uh, so that they can uh, have their case held before a judge. Now, the people here obviously are living here at the time they, they start working with you, but if one or the other moves out of state, how do you uh, continue to follow and process that case? If it's the, the person <clears throat> with the child, uh, that's who the court order stays with and that's whose jurisdiction it is. So if the father moves out of state um, he, um, and does not have the child, I should say, uh, he, um, he has to let us know where he's working, what his new address is, um, and uh, anything else that we, we may need to know. Uh, and then we inform the, the, the uh, child support agency in that new city or new state, um, wherever he may be, and um, let them know that this is our case and uh, they may be coming to them for help if they are. Please let us know so that we can, um, we can get that information updated on our system. So, and if both move out of town and are out of the state, uh, then what we try to do is have the new state take over, um, again, wherever the child is, because we've had a lot of cases where somebody moved to Oklahoma and somebody moved to California, and uh, so you have to find out who has um, jurisdiction over that. And, um, it's usually following whoever has the child. That's where the, the courts want to see the, the court order being um, monitored. Okay, and then with uh, court orders, uh, is there a time limit on those orders? As far as how long they must yeah. pay? Uh, it's, uh, it's once a child reaches 18, the, uh, the courts normally uh, do not uh, have them pay any longer unless they're pursuing a high school degree, then they move it to, um, to 19, and then it, it ends at 19. Okay, so. thank you very much, Jim. With that, I'll turn it back over to Adam to finish up. Thanks, Mike. Jim, you covered a lot of information, and one of the things I really respect and, and appreciate about your department is it's incredibly important work, and it's work that most people for them don't appreciate. Uh, I know that your staff deal with sometimes some angry parents or some upset people, and they're looking for assistance, they're looking for direction, they're wondering where their payment is, they're wondering why they're why the father or mother isn't fulfilling their obligations. And I just want to say thank you to you and your staff because it's very, very important work. If, if these dollars or financial support is not being collected for these children, obviously that can create a real hardship and other deeper, more expensive programs ultimately might be needed for children if they don't get the, the appropriate upbringing or the appropriate health care. So mm -hmm. again, I thank you and your staff for the important work. If folks thank watching you. this, have questions or want to learn more or you covered a topic and they're not real sure you know how that all plays out who do they contact how do they get more information well we have um phone numbers set up for um for our own agency and um all um the direct um numbers of of any of our staff are are listed on our um, website but for sheboygan county child support in general our our general phone number is 920 Four five nine three zero four one, and then if you want to fax us information, because there are times when people, we usually ask people to write down their questions so that we, we know exactly what they're asking for. Because often you hear things and it's different from what they're actually saying. So uh, the fax number is nine two zero four five nine zero three nine nine, and then there is a website for the child support agency, which is www.co.sheboygan.wi.us. And then we have an email address specifically for child support, which is child support, all one word, at co.sheboygan.wi.us. And then also, once you have a case with us, we supply the, um, the email addresses for, um, for your caseworkers so that you can email them directly. And then you also get their direct phone numbers so that you can call them directly if you have a question. Uh, and most of the people that do call, though, still use the the 4590-3041, which is our receptionist, and many people don't believe this, but our receptionist uh, and um, the other person that answers the phone when, when she's not available, um, 
basically know everything that there is about your case because they can look it up on the kids system and see it all there in, in green and, and white. So um, they, uh, they can help you uh, as much as your specialist can. Now if you want specific details about the court order and, and things like that, then you may need to talk to the specialist and uh, most of the time they're available to take your calls and uh, are more than happy to meet with you if you make an appointment with them in advance and let them know. So. And if you didn't catch all that, <laughs> contact our county clerk. Um, we're on the website, we're in the phone book, and our county clerk knows all the departments and all the department's numbers, and certainly we'll get you in touch with someone at Child Support. And I know periodically I get calls where people get in the phone tree there and they don't immediately get a hold of someone, and certainly we apologize for that, but don't give up. Uh, there are different numbers, as you just heard, or different ways of getting information. So, Jim, thank you for joining us today. And again, thank you for the important work you do. I have so much more to say, but I guess too little time to say it. So, um. <laughs> well, I do want to take a minute and a half before we wind up, because this is Chairman Mike Vandersteen's last term. He, was, uh, he, he had two consecutive terms as county board chairman by rule. Now he's done. And next week or by the time you watch this program we'll likely have a new county board chairperson and a new individual sitting next to me in the future but i just want to say how much i've enjoyed working with mike vandersteen he has been an outstanding county board chairman an outstanding leader and just an excellent county board supervisor uh, when i think of the last four years and the work mike has been involved with and the leadership that he has provided Sheboygan County has so much to be proud of. During Mike's tenure, uh, Sheboygan County completed a second program evaluation and prioritization process where we looked at every program and service and ranked them, which helped us make difficult decisions, establish priorities, funding decisions. We created a shared purchasing agent with the city of Sheboygan that we share between the two. Um, Mike took the lead in once again revisiting shared dispatch or joint dispatch, which is actively now being uh, considered and negotiated. Fiscally, uh, Mike produced property tax relief three of the four years that he was in the helm as county board chairman. Our fiscal uh, reserves are healthier now than they were before he started. Our bond rating is higher today than it was when he started. He had the courage to propose a half percent sales tax to maintain critical programs, but as importantly, reduce property taxes, reduce our debt service. Uh, Mike also received a Wisconsin Good Government Award and bottom line is, and I could go on and on, believe me, a lot of good things have happened under Chairman Mike Vandersteen's leadership. So Mike, I just want to say thank you. You've been a pleasure to work with, and I'm glad we're going to continue to be able to work together as you serve your residents in Sheboygan County. Thank you for those kind comments, Adam. But, you know, it's all due to the good team we have here. Yourself, all the department heads, uh, that makes it all possible. It wasn't Mike doing it. Uh, I may have been the, the person that was chairman, but it was everybody's efforts and uh, making it happen. So thank you, and thank you to all the department heads, and you specifically, you. Jim. And thank you for joining us. Next month, we're going to have our corporation counsel here, Carl Bizing, again, another very important member of our team. And until then, thank you for your support, and we'll see you next month.